Hello everyone, it is Saturday night, yes it is, and that means it's time for the <laughs> Weekly Dig. For anyone new to the stream, this is a live show where we dig into anime, old and new. I'm Brent, these are my wonderful co-host John. Hello all, konnichiwa, minam. And Steve. Hello, hello everybody. And let us start our dig tonight by analyzing an anime. I don't know quite what to call it. It's not a movie. It's not real. It's kind of an OVA, technically. It's yeah. probably the closest thing. Voices from a Distant Star, which we all watched this week. Um, mm -hmm. Could you call it a passion project? You could certainly call it that um, yeah. in, in multiple ways. Um, so Voice of a Distant Star is... The second work, technically, from Makoto Shinkai. Um, his first work was a short film called The Rain, A Girl in My Letter, I think, which is like a couple minute long, you know, kind of mood piece, just tone piece of essentially <laughs> panning across drawings and that kind of stuff. Um, Voice of a Star started because Shinkai was actually working for a video game company, and he had access to Premiere and After Effects and all that kind of stuff, and folks in the company were talking about, hey, it's amazing, and this is like 2000. Uh, year 2000, they're like, it's amazing. People have access to all these digital tools. Someone could, like, make their own anime in their spare time if they wanted to. <laughs> and he was like, hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Now that you mentioned that. Um, and huh. s yeah. And so, uh, and so he drew Voices of a Distant Star himself in seven months. <clears throat> yep. 25 minute uh, animation. Um, uh, he did not create the entire thing himself. So he, like, he got somebody else to do the music, stuff along those lines. Um, okay. Also, he and his wife, or I guess girlfriend slash um, fiance at the time, um, did the, the the Japanese voice track. However, if you listen to it in Japanese, that's not what you hear. They went back when, once it like got rolling. They hired voice actors to re-record all that dialogue because Aww. apparently, like, <laughs> he was like, yeah, no, we need professionals to do that. Um, but, you know, oh well. Um, We're just terrible. <laughs> yeah, I have no idea. Um, hey, John, good to see you. So, yeah, it's, um, it's a really interesting short film because it is very much from the mind of one person. Uh, what's hilarious, if you go to Wikipedia, he will say, uh, um, uh, they'll, they'll make a reference that he was inspired by um, um, Dracula, which does not make sense. And then when you go to the interview, he says, growing up, I you know, read things like Dracula and watched stuff like, you know, whatever. And I was inspired by the idea of all of these ideas coming from what, the head of one person. Like this whole world uh, being created by Bram Stoker. And this, uh -huh. that whole idea was like, oh, yeah, somebody could actually do this on their own. Um, so, yeah, he, he, was, he was not used to the media <laughs> when he was doing interviews, perhaps, quite as much as he is now. Um, yeah, it's, it's a, a short film that he um, uh, um, did, did off himself, and uh, let's start off by talking about just sort of visually. We've <clears> seen <throat> some other um, Makoto Shinkai works. Um, how would you like compare and contrast Voice of a Distant Star to some of the other Shinkai stuff you've seen? Like, mm. does it feel like a Shinkai film? No. Mm. Yeah, well, I, I shouldn't say that. It's so definitely, like, no, it's not. <laughs> um, <laughs> It, it, I it, if you if you had not told me that who that was, mm -hmm. I wouldn't have made the connection. Mm, I wouldn't okay. have made the connection. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but then, but knowing who it is, and then kind of like recognizing backgrounds. That's what you yeah. said. Okay, yeah, that I, visual I, style. I, 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 yeah. yeah, that mm -hmm. visual style right. of the backgrounds. And I was just like, <clears throat> okay, that's yes, okay, that's him. The the character designs remind me of Mega Tokyo. Yeah, you're absolutely right. <laughs> you <laughs> totally. Know? And um, and uh, I was just like, going, wow, you know, uh, it wouldn't be crazy if, if if that dude was involved with this, but you know, yeah. it's not. But, but I, I saw that, and I and so I would not have initially said that it was him. I would probably have guessed that it was a, it, it was a student art film or something. Sure. And um, but the the animation of it was also so 
definitely the beginnings of somebody somebody's career <laughs> and you know that's you know, yep. we've all gotten to that we're all at that you know we in, in our respective things okay. you know there's always that point where we always be we you have to start somewhere yes right you have to mm -hmm. start somewhere yeah. Yeah. but but you know but you got to imagine that if he did that i didn't know it did it in since seven months this is something that had i even remotely that amount of skill would not have taken me seven months. It would have been like like five years later. I would have been like, okay, we're at the thirty second mark in this anime, yeah. you know. So so you know, kudos, kudos yeah, for for that effort. Yeah. Yeah. When I watched it, I was like, again, if I if I didn't know it was Shinkai, I would have been like, this is a very skilled amateur. Yeah. Right. Like right. there's somebody who who knows what they're doing. They're they're, they're, they're they've got a they're gonna they're gonna do great things, but they're they're still just figuring it out. John, what are you, what are you say, I, I, I was with Steve. It's like when I yeah. was first looking at it, I'm like, if I didn't know that we were watching a Shinkai thing, I'd be like, I have no idea who this is. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And it's, um, I, I didn't even get background like vibe off of it until I sort right. of started thinking more on it and thinking about just the the way that the characters are done and the way that the story is laid out. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I could see the sh the Shinkai connection to that mm -hmm. um, more than I could the visual style of it and. Yeah. You know, at first, again, remove Shinkai as a part of this and remove it, you know, done in seven months. I thought, it, you know, wow, this looks like someone's they're they're tinkering with the visual model. Mm -hmm. It's like they're trying to get, you know, some of it's looking a little like odd in some of the way the mm -hmm. angulation of some stuff and like yep. the, the lining on things. I'm like, this is very artistic choices that are going on here. And I don't know what they're fueling. I don't know what it's driving yeah. towards. Mm -hmm. And then we get like CGI space thing and floating in a capsule. <laughs> I'm like, okay. Oh, I don't know now. <laughs> like, yeah, now you've just yeah. gone off on me here. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. When that scene happened, I just went. Uh, <laughs> uh, yeah. And it's I mean it's re it's really well done. It's yeah. it's the the way that it's it switches into that is is organic movement to that. But it's just like to take it from what I was thinking is like very artistic presentation to like a really amazing, you know, nicely on CGI, mm -hmm. like yeah. technical drawing. I'm like, yeah, for 2002, oh. <laughs> dang. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, oh, wow. <laughs> okay. Yep. So, <clears throat> yeah, that, that's, that was my spot on there. Well, so. it's interesting thing. It, it is in many ways a very ambitious concept um, of being very much about your two young lovers and then this sudden sci-fi angle that, like you say, gets kind of thrown at you, um, but that then becomes kind of the the philosophical core of the story, the idea that oh, this person is being sent you know further and further and further away, and thus the messages are taking longer and longer and longer to get back, um, and so you know what does that mean to their relationship? Um, um, but yeah, it, what I also find interesting is how smart Shinkai was of saying. I'm going to make a story by myself, an animation by myself. And I'm going to have these two characters and nobody else. Yeah. Yeah. No, no big crowd scenes. No, you, know, you don't see teachers around. It's like we, we, we get very focused on these two characters. So he's not trying to do a hundred things at once. Yeah. I'm reminded of Miyazaki saying that uh, when he and Takahata were working at toy on like various you know films in like the 60s and 70s one of their ideas was um every movie that would come along they would say let's use this as an opportunity to get good at this one thing right like let, let's let, let's let's focus on crowd scenes in this movie and we're going to spend you know a year and a half working on it let's kind of do good crowd scenes in this and so every one was an opportunity to to improve in skills and i think when this when you're doing so much at once finding yeah. things to to slice off is really smart well, just like the animation with the with the ship, the Lysander or whatever yeah. the, that big giant yeah. ship is, <clears throat> you don't have like little people running around on this and stuff mm -hmm. going on over there and all the you know what I mean. It's like okay, you're drawing it back to get a much bigger picture, and it yeah. you know it feels like a very large experience going on out there. But boy, that saves a lot of time on the old wrist yeah, exactly. <laughs> trying, to, trying to draw stuff out, <laughs> digitally render it. You're yeah. like, oh god. John Reinhardt in chat is pointing out that um, uh, this would be probably done faster as you can um, tween in, in the software. I, I don't think there are any tweens in this. I think 
Shinkai drew everything himself because there's not a lot of tweens. <laughs> like it's yeah. it's it's pretty much just you know like whip flaps and occasional movement, but you can tell that thing where it's like this tweening would just take so much time, so much effort on this. Yeah, um, it totally makes sense. Well, I like the use of things where like looking at the phone, mm -hmm. and boy, those Nokia's. That's not yeah. a lie. <laughs> those things would last forever. I wish I yeah. still had my analog Nokia. It was like, oh, yeah. <laughs> but, you know, going through and showing the messages, you've cut out everything going on around it. Mm -hmm. You know what right. I mean? And it's like, and that's perfectly, you know, great cinematic use. Yeah. Focus. You're focusing on this. You're focusing on the message. Mm -hmm. You're focusing on what's going on here. Yeah. And you're not animating a lot of crap. Right. Exactly. <laughs> like, ha <"Aha." laughs> you know, So you can limit your animation as long as you have a solid you know, drive and you know where you're going with that story right. and that it doesn't, you notice it after the fact, you're like, wait a minute, there wasn't really anything going on there. Right, yeah, exactly. <laughs> it was just literally paying, text. Yeah. yeah, but you're paying attention to the story. Right. You're not, have, you're not concerned about, it's, oh, this is animation that looks a little rough. Oh, that's, right. that's, 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 you know, it's like, no. Absolutely. And as you're also pointed out, like, you know, he still had to, like, redraw a Nokia phone interface. Yeah, <laughs> right. And fantastically that. too. Yeah, I mean, like, like, mm -hmm. that's exactly yeah. right. Um, I do wonder. I mean, because at the time, I I'm sure there was no way to like screen grab from a Nokia phone, so it's not like you could just you know mock something up. Yeah. Um, well, I was gonna say the the closest grab you could get would literally be like I I had an Olympus digital camera. And, in, yeah, yeah. In the year yeah. two thousand, right? Yeah, that would be about the only way you could yeah. grab an image. Just literally, just hold the phone up with the camera yeah. and be like, "Click." I'll bet there was a day that he spent tracing over that photograph, Probably. right, and just tracing that out. Like, okay, yeah. now I've got, I've got it down. Here. Um, speaking of the animation, I do want to point out, like, the animation and the, like the the actual art here is kind of rough. They they do that classic mistake of where you draw the shape of the head. And then you basically fill that with hair. Like the hair, the hair has no volume; it is just yeah. like part of the skull, um, which is you know it's, it's an easy mistake to make, but it, it does happen in this. So again, if you're used to like the the polish of a modern shinkai, it's not there yet. Well, yeah, it also looks the like the forehead the is like hair. You know? yeah. <laughs> it, it it looked like the forehead on certain shots was just like long. Yeah, you know, exactly. Like yeah, yeah. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> yeah. What if you were like, mm, okay, all right. Yeah, um, it's an artistic choice. Sure. <laughs> so are some of those perspective issues too. Yeah. <laughs> and actually, there's a big point. Um, um, to our earlier points, there's clearly a lot of work here to kind of focus on the camera and do stuff. Like, you know, we're just going to look at a character's mouth or a character's hand or whatever. Yeah. Um, and in some ways, that is a you know, visually distinctive way, way of doing things. This is a case where I think it is somewhat overdone. Um, there are certainly shots where it's like, okay, we're, we're cutting between head, hand, space, mecha, all these various things. And I, I found it a little cluttered sometimes. Um, not, not in a like terrible way, but in a way where I'm like, if you could just show us things in perspective of other things, it would be a little easier to follow. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> not terrible, but just one of those things where I'm like, mm. Pushing, pushing those weird camera angles a bit too much for me. Well, again, for seven months worth of like yeah, doing this totally. this pa this passion project, I can understand like not throwing caution to the wind right. because the, just the monumental effort to do this thing. Absolutely. But if you're gonna do it, and it's gonna be your baby. Well, yo, screw it all. I'm gonna do like all kinds of weird things. Right. I'm gonna, yeah, like, jump from point. this to that, and yeah. I'm gonna flip around here. Here's how this camera angle is gonna work. And, like, yeah. Okay, I got you. If nobody yeah. buys it, it doesn't matter because you've done this as your personal project. Yeah. Um, if it lights somebody's like fire and they're mm -hmm. like, "Hey, you know, Shinkai, why don't you come talk to me?" Perfect. You know, it's a win-win. <laughs> yeah, and better that than a very you know, bland, generic um, yeah. approach. Bambi versus Godzilla. <laughs> right. <laughs> um, <laughs> womp, womp. <laughs> there you go. Um. And then the story turns, it takes it, well, so first off, um, so let's go back a little bit and, and talk a little bit about some of the, uh, the sort of anime references in this. Um, obviously, the opening is very sort of um, um, Moe Harem, you know, 
canon heir to heart kind of a style. Yeah. Um, not complaining, but, but very much you know. This looks like the, the box the the box art for you know a, a visual novel. Um, uh, and then um, I'll see if I can uh, find a screen grab of this. Yeah, here we go. Um, uh, when they're when, when they stop for the train, and the train goes by, and it's all UN Spacey. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I was like, okay, okay. I, I had a good laugh about that one. I was just yeah. like, oh. I had to stop it. Yeah. Because I was like, did I? Did I see that? I'm like, really? I'm like, okay, cool. I got you. I got uh, you. I see where you're going. We caught that one. Um, but then the end when, um, yeah, spoiler alert, um, she, uh, she gets to the alien world and she has that little conversation there. Um, it goes all effing lame. Yeah. Yeah. In like frighteningly. <laughs> yeah. In like wow. You know, talking to a younger version of herself in like a shift, um uh yes. you know, clothing wise, it's it's very much just like Lane episode thirteen. Okay, let's go. Um very, very interesting, very odd. Um and it should be pointed out Lane had come out like a couple years prior, so it would have been kind of new and, and in the uh, in the zeitgeist, if you will, so relatively speaking, that um, cutting edge, absolutely. And of course, Evan Gallen was only a few years earlier, and I, I the aliens obviously have a, an angel vibe. Yeah, I'd say yeah. Um, not just in terms of being weird, but also just in terms of kind of that visceral combat of you know blood spurting everywhere. Yeah, cutting um, them in half. Also, that Gundam with the cutting in half of the well, yeah, like absolutely. So it yeah. felt very yeah. Gundamish. There was something else in here I noticed that was that was very Gundam. There was some I don't remember it now off the top of my head, but some kind of Gundam reference of just like, you know, a pose of a mecha or something. It was like, oh, okay, that's calling back to Zeta yeah. or something. So, yeah, definitely. Um, I would say even just like the well, maybe not. Um, yeah, I, I would say the way she uses the the, the gun, um, even though it's hand mounted. Um, yeah. You know, in Gundam, it's often kind of that that extra thing that you pull in, which you know, oh, okay, wait, wait, right. <sighs> you use the Vulcans. Uh, felt that way. Um, I got a uh, unfortunate pilot candidate vibe from, <laughs> from, from, from the ah, from, yeah. from 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 the uh, from the uh, the the enemy because uh, oh, it just reminded me yeah. from the enemy because the first of all the animation and one of the attacks that it uses where it encircles. Her mecha. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah you yeah. know that kind of a thing, and then a little eye because I'm sure it's blink, you know, and yeah. looks at you. And um, that reminded me of some of the elements of, of of Pilot Candidate, where it's just like it, it which is technically a Gundam spinoff, <laughs> but uh, very loosely, folks, very loosely. Yeah. Um, but uh, yeah, I saw that. I was just like, oh, okay. But uh, but yeah, and the blood splatter did remind me of Evangelion, yeah. and. Uh, her no, outfit like, kind of reminds me of Pilot Candidate too. For some yeah, yeah, okay. yeah, mm. yeah. And when she talked to herself, her younger self or whatever, I kind of just went, "Oh no, stop! Wait, okay, come on, let's let's rewind this a little <laughs> bit." And I actually rewinded the anime oh, a little bit. I said, yeah. "Okay, let's watch this again." I'm going like, going. So is this the aliens talking to her? Is this her talking to her? Is this because right. you'll see him again? I'm like thinking, no. <laughs> no, I'm thinking not. I'm thinking not. I mean, you know, the messages keep getting farther and farther and farther. And, yeah. you know, and it's just kind of like, uh, yep. all right, not sure what, what that psychosis is, but yeah. something definitely happened there. Mm -hmm. And, you know, you have a couple of things that are going on there. You have, you know, 15-year-old girl spending a year in space, you know, alone fighting, in, not even fighting an alien. Like, th th there are six months where they're just traveling. Yeah. Yeah. Like, doo -doo 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 -doo. Um, so that's, yeah. um, but, uh, so yeah, I mean, it could, it could absolutely be just kind of, she's having a bit of a mental break right now. Um, I also think it kind of ties into sort of classic sci-fi concepts of who knows what this world is doing to her, you know, what weird energies are emanating off the planet, what yeah. psychic attacks the aliens are doing to her. That is causing you know just weird sort of fantasies to ripple out in her head. Who knows? Um, but but yeah, it, it is definitely kind of an okay. This is taking a turn, kind of a yeah. A, a moment. <laughs> yeah. Um, well, it reminded me of what we talked about it before. The book called F is it Forever War? I keep screwing the title up. 
Uh, Hogman Forever War. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Like, you know, this idea of, like, I'm still 15, and by the time you get this message, you're 24. Yeah. The girl who leapt through time? Mm. Love, mm-hmm. space. The girl who leapt through space. Mm. Same kind of concept, mm. where it's like, you're going out, and you, in your relative time frame, mm. are the same age you are. Yeah. But now that you've gone out X number of light years trying to come back, it's like, yeah. I think it was I think it was a girl left through space where mm. she comes back finally to Earth okay. to find, like, it's like a thousand years later. I think you're thinking Gunbuster. Yeah. Is it Gunbuster? Gunbuster is it definitely... Might be gun- it, mm. it, yeah, 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 yeah. No, that. You're right. Yeah. It's, it's Gunbuster. Hey, I was going to bring up Gunbuster, yeah. Yeah, because, you know, here you've got that kind of concept where it's like, mm-hmm. you'll see him again. It's like, probably, no, probably yeah. not. <laughs> right? <You're> like, <laughs> no, no, you might no. see his children or his mm. children's children's children, but, it's, right. you know, it's not going to be like the same well, kid. <laughs> yeah, it, it, it was the premise of, of the end of, of uh, Arthur C. Clarke's um, Songs from Distant Earth, ah. where um, the ship goes on to, goes from, from the one planet where they stop and don't want to spoil it because it's a really good book. Mm. But they go on and they are not quite faster than light ship. Mm. And so everyone's in cryostasis. And so when he gets out of it, and it's the end of the book when he gets out of it, one of the characters gets out of it. <clears throat> and it's kind of like, oh, actually, this happened in Interstellar too, where mm. he sits down and he starts going through the messages and he's mm. watching the former girlfriend grow older, having children, and da 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 da. And these messages keep coming and coming. And, you know, he's really objectively only a year older mm. than from yeah. when he left, like 400 years prior, mm. you know. And, yeah. you know, yeah. so seeing all that stuff. So as, as this is like, you know, as the time stretches out when they're. When, God bless the Nokia phones. Um, you know, <laughs> messaging, but a Nokia phone, and you know, I can only presume that even then the signal had to be boosted somehow. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But yeah, you know, yeah. but mm-hmm. but you know, it's it's you know, it's that thing where the guy, the poor guy at at, at, at the end, you know, on, on on Earth, he's just like, do I move on? Do I wait? Do I? You know how do I how do I handle this? And that's really the I think the emotional power of the film right. is this idea of of being stuck for both of them, and him going, yeah. "Do I wait eight years for this girl?" Um, having no idea, you know, what's going to happen next. If I'll even receive another message from her if she's dead. Yeah. Uh you know, but also realizing I'm all she has. Yeah, like what weight on a on a teenager to go? Yeah, yeah, but like she she needs you, <laughs> but it's like, but I can't be there for ah, uh, you know. Yeah, and, and the weight on on a teenager by the time you know that eight years passes. Oh, I'm fifteen. Right. You're twenty four by now. Mm-hmm. And it's like, yeah, he's an adult mm-hmm. and like doing adult things, and it's like you know, kudos to him that yeah. he has the wherewithal to sort of keep at this. Yeah, because. That youthful, oh, you know, we were young and mm-hmm. she was cute. And we had this great time, and then she left. It's like, you know, he's a good guy for still keeping in the loop, well, despite the fact that, you know, what I mean, he's got so, he has so, moved so, on in, so, in yeah. relativist way. So. so while you were just talking about that, John, and it's spot on, I suddenly got Alphaville forever young. <laughs> just ah, oh, there you go. Yeah. You know. Well, let's talk about that. Um, Al- you... Alphaville? Oh. <laughs> Not <laughs> quite. Um, <laughs> so, here's the thing. First off, do you think Mikako survived that battle? I do not. At the end. Do you <clears> think <throat> he knows? Because we see the, the newspaper by his, his door... Which talks about the fleet and like how the fleet was attacked and it was really bad and all this kind of stuff. Yeah. So like, you know, does he know she's dead? At the end. And for for, the, for those who haven't seen it yet, by the way, it's left ambiguous, right? Like there's yeah. there's, there's a big battle. Right, yeah. There's, she's there's... she's kind of left floating there. You know, you don't know. You're not meant to know. I'm asking just kind of fr- from you know what where are you leaning from what you saw? Yeah. Well, I think it's a – that newspaper article 
in the context of Japanese historical experience mm. would be a similar article posted about when the Yamato sailed out on its mm. last voyage. Mm -hmm. That it is, the fleet has left, fantabulous victory, there's been some damage, <laughs> but we're doing okay. Right. And look how that went. And I mm -hmm. think that's, that's that to, at least in my mind, it kind of clicked as like, this is your kind of call back to that, that people would be like, oh yeah, yeah. Yep. propaganda. Right. Propaganda is not going to tell you what happened. He has sure. no like objective means of determining, mm -hmm. did the Lysander like explode? Mm -hmm. Is she dead? Mm -hmm. Did what happened to the entirety of the fleet? Nobody's going to really tell you the honest goodness truth. So now is that sort of pinpoint moment where it's like, does he just cut it and run and mm -hmm. say, okay, now, I can, now I'm free. I can go on and move on with my life. Or am I still going to be in limbo from here on out? Mm -hmm. It's just like, oh. And, but that's the other interesting thing, is that he has not moved on. If right. He, he's decided to join the fleet, the implication being that maybe their paths will cross. Maybe. 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 Right. Yeah. And, and that's... And I, that, go ahead. No, I was just going to say is I don't think she lived through the, through the battle. I think that, you know, when... Again, we see we see all the <clears throat> we see all the, the the newspaper stories and saying you know the the propaganda, but you know there's that ominous undercurrent of this damage happened, um, and I think he's coming to terms with the fact that you know maybe something has happened. Finally, gets into the to the fleet. He's going to go out there, and as they're as she's thinking, as he's thinking, you know, he's like, if, if we could just communicate the one thing just the yeah. one little thing to each other to to make this all worthwhile is the statement is i am here yeah. just to let the other person know no i'm, I'm yeah. still here it's okay no please yeah. stay yeah. in contact with me i'm still here but they can't do that so that you don't know that and then there's that image of her floating off in space and you know in, in the damaged mecca and it's just kind of like no I don't, I don't think she made it. I don't yeah. think she made it. But he'll he'll find out. But there will be at least the one sad takeaway I had was was like, regardless, he's going to have some type of resolution. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. The the time between the two mm. points are going to get closer together again, as opposed oh, to going yeah. away yeah. as he's approaching her. So that the time it's not. Make up, making up for lost time, but the time that they're going to be spending away right. from each other is there, yeah. and then he'll have some type of resolution. Either she is going to be there, or she's going to be dead, and then there's there's right. the finality of it. Yeah, presumably once once he's in the military and they get going towards that direction, mm -hmm. the truth will come out. Right. right. Of like, okay, here you go, guys. The life center was badly damaged, as in everybody's dead. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Um, the ship's floating out there somewhere, but everybody's dead, so the fleet's gone. But we're going to go get him. <laughs> one thing I really like about his sort of ending, so to speak, um, is the fact that um, on on the one hand, like you know, he he wants to go back out in space, right? Um, but on the other, like he's he's making a choice. You know, he's not just sitting in his room waiting for that call that, that message over and over again that we saw earlier in the, in the short yeah. you know he's like no i'm i'm going to make steps move on you know, do something but it's also doing something that gives us a chance um so there's a, a, a clever way of kind of help, helping them, them reconnect um uh, yeah, <laughs> i like that john ryer um my heart tells me she's still alive like i i want her to still be alive that, that that's kind of my my sappy um uh, version of the story uh, I was like no I don't I, I, I my head canon is she's still alive um uh, but I think the story and but I think it's also kind of like the end of inception right like <clears throat> you're not supposed to it's not supposed to tell you one way or the other it's up to you to decide right. um but I and I, I this is a case where I like that where I think thinking about the implications of both options are viable and important and useful ways of thinking about the story because that is kind of what the story yeah. is about is loss um or potential loss right i think it works, works well um or as john Ryher says you know or they'll meet um together or at least some version of her something that looks like her uh 
As long as she doesn't revert to Tang, then we should <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, I was gonna say if I was gonna fan fiction this, the the Lysander gets blown up. She floats through space. She makes friends with the aliens, and they have a meeting of the minds. Mm -hmm. She's the first contact with them that that you know solves the problem mm -hmm. of this intergalactic war, and yeah. then they mm -hmm. meet up and it, yeah, fanfic all the way <laughs> <laughs> to, a, to a happy ending. Yes. And I, that's Shingo oh. came back to it. Then there you go. Ender's game. There's also an Ender's oh, Game. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. That's yeah. an interesting point. Yeah. Um, um, or perhaps Speaker to the, Speaker to the Dead. Um, but, uh, yeah, no. Um, yeah, I, I, my mind was definitely going in those directions of, uh, oh, no, they'll, they'll, they'll see each other again, please. <laughs> Um, As opposed to his ship coming out of like warp, and then her like frozen and crushed <laughs> mecha bounces oh, off the come on. Oh, no! um, This is not still clutching, like... still clutching the Nokia phone. Right. Yeah. Oh, wow. I, I don't think so. Well, so cold, so cold. It's one of the things about about Makoto Shinkai films is that they they are always about romance, but they're never like. Harlequin romances, right? It, it's right, always right. about this complication of like love is hard and love is weird and love doesn't always work out and like that's okay, like you move on. Um, and it's why I think the story works so well because it has this kind of complicated relationship to to that to that relationship, if you will. Um, I got laser eyes. Says I don't understand the alien war. Why go across the universe to fight them? Yeah, that's never really explained in the um, yeah. uh, in the story. Um, the implication is um, aliens. Show, well, they, they say the aliens showed up on I think Mars and attacked yeah. Mars. Uh, and so the implication is we need to you know take the fight to them to make sure they don't hurt us. Um, yeah. But yes, yeah, it's never really explained. Well, there is a one moment there where they're about by Pluto, where it's like mm -hmm. oh. There's an alien, you know, yeah. fleet or a group of aliens. Let's hit warp. It's like, wait a minute. <laughs> Hold on a second. Yeah. If, there's a, if there's my Pluto and you leave, mm. you get the whole fleet. What about Earth? <laughs> Y'all want to stop and think about that for a minute? <laughs> Just like when the Yamada was fighting the Gamelons. You know, do right. you fight them at Pluto and then leave, mm. or do you fight them and then remove them from Pluto? Everything comes back to you, Yamado. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, totally. <laughs> Cool. Any other thoughts on Voices of a Distant Star? For somebody who's passion project, I think he did a fine job. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, you know, I would like him to revisit it and make it into a four-episode OVA. Yeah, yeah. I absolutely. would really like him to re not necessarily for a resolution. I just feel yeah. like we have a skeleton, a good skeleton of a story here, and I think that we could draw that out a little bit more yeah. and just i mean it'd still be the same story but just more flesh yeah. uh, and, and and right right yeah yeah yeah, yeah, that, yeah yeah and now that he has these really good skills <laughs> um you know animation skills you, you can redo that and still i think i think have a really really nice 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 anime actually i, yeah. I, I think that would ah. Yoko Kano can do the score, and uh, you know, anyway. <laughs> well, I think certainly if you could, you know, add that the uh, male protagonist, there's a harem of all other kinds of oh, girls, and uh, <laughs> it's all these lolly moe things. They're all going to go into space. And he's got to choose which girl to talk to on the Nokia. Oh, I see this could go great places. Makoto Shinkai <laughs> for April Fools should totally release like a 30 second <laughs> teaser. <laughs> Congrats, I'm going back to the well. <laughs> Voices of a distant idols. star, the hair. <laughs> right. oh, damn it. <laughs> No, that's not what we wanted. If you ask for more, I'm going to give you what you didn't ask for. In cooperation with NTT Tacomo and uh, <laughs> Love Live School Project. Um, yeah, and the aliens fight back by singing. Right, oh, exactly. Yeah, exactly. Oh, oh, man. <laughs> and the whole uh, thing's resolved with a with a stage play. No, yeah, damn it. No. Yeah, it's all no, resolved with no. NFTs. Uh, yeah, you, you have to buy <laughs> NFTs to actually like help them win the war. That's how all the oh right? no, God, no, that was awful. <laughs> <laughs> Pledge now to save humanity. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> <sighs> 
but I want my McDonald's. <laughs> <laughs> so that is Voice of Innocent Star. Um, uh, again, animation, rough around the edges, but it, totally understandable. Um, solid story, that solid very story. Very solid story. Um, uh, really well put together, really well thought out. Um, and uh, really, really just, um, just impressive um, um, all the way around. And as folks were saying in, in the chat, just really um, engaging, right? It's, it's one of those mm -hmm. one of those things where you pop on, you're like, okay, whatever, whatever, and then you're pulled in for 25 minutes, like you're watching this whole thing. Yeah. So good on them there. If I had known about this, this would have been on my panel list. Ah. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yep. Um, yeah. Other advantage: 25 minutes long, so it's not yeah. hard to, <laughs> to, yeah. to watch. Just pick it up. It is easy to knock out. Exactly. Um, so yeah, that's Voice of It Isn't Star. Thank you all for watching. We'll take a quick break, and we'll be back in a few minutes to talk about um, uh, more modern anime and the latest anime news. We will be right back. <laughs>